To see the fully uncut version of this video, head over to patreon.com forward slash John Joe Lyons. What's that like to live deliciously? <laughs> What's happening? My name is John Joe Lyons and today I'm here to present to you my review for Trauma. Written and directed by Lucio A. Robes, Trauma Stars! Oh, ladies. Four friends partying in a house in the middle of nowhere are brutally attacked by a man and his son, forcing the remaining women to take revenge upon them. You know, you can tell a lot about my state of mind by the films that I choose to cover week to week. If I'm feeling silly, maybe I'll cover an immature horror comedy like Famine or Gutterballs. If I'm not feeling super confident, I might choose to cover a typical extreme horror movie like Le Petit Mort. And if I'm feeling adventurous, I might choose to cover something weird and experimental like Cat Sick Blues. That being said, this week I'll be taking a look at Trauma, a brutal and depressing film whose main set piece is a 10 minute long scene. What that says about my mood this week, I'll leave up to you. Trauma is a movie I've seen a lot of people compare to a Serbian film not just for its extreme content but also its rich subtext. Well, I'm in it for the incredibly uncomfortable violence so if that's to your taste, we eating good tonight you dangers to yourselves and everyone around you. But before we get into all of that, I just want to remind you, you can see this video completely uncut and early at patreon.com forward slash John Joe Lyons for as little as two dollars a month. As long time viewers will already know, the last few months have been absolutely dire for the channel in terms of monetization. I haven't made a single penny from the last five videos uploaded either due to false copyright claims or being instantly demonetized even though the YouTube versions are completely censored. How the people that manually review my videos are able to sleep at night after denying me the seven or so dollars for 40 to 50 hours of work each week is beyond me. I'm just glad they're happy, healthy and not all on fire. That being said, if you like the channel and even more so the idea of me being able to pay my rent and eat food, not one or the other, head over there now and sign up. What's two dollars? Two dollars wouldn't even get me 15 minutes with your mum. Your mum, the cheapest sex worker this side of Sussex. And finally, if you don't have the two dollars but still like the content, please click subscribe. I'm pushing super hard for us to hit 20k as soon as possible, so please do me a massive favour and click that button now. I'll wait. Go on then. But anyway, I'm in the mood to feel even more depressed than I already do, so let's not waste any more time. Get ready to see a father-son relationship even weirder than mine, and my dad's a 60-year-old with the hair of a 14-year-old emo girl and the artistic ability of Michael J. Fox painting during an earthquake with his eyes closed. This is trauma. The movie begins advising it's inspired by true events as we cut to Chile 1978 where we hear a gunshot and see a man being dragged away from a woman by a soldier. I don't know whether to say Chile or Chile, so I'm just going to say Chile. Screaming can be heard in the distance as we push in on the tortured woman's face. Another man asks if she thought she could fool him with that communist and calls her a he motions to one of the guards who brings in the woman's son as she pleads with him to let the boy go. Instead, the man is given a syringe which he jams into him. The boy calls the man dad as he pulls down his pants, cuts his face, places him in front of his mother and starts f***ing him off. He then forces the son to f*** his mother. The man tells the mother he's going to her daughter and she tells her son to take care of his little sister. The man then pulls out a gun and shoots the mother in the head. Covered in brain matter, the son is forced to carry on. The man then motions for the soldier to let go of the boy who continues on his own. Well, that's one way to open your movie. Cut to these two ladies, Julia and Cammy, getting home and having a little kiss. Then having a full-on lesbian sex scene. And they actually slap fannies at the end. Like, like that. I didn't know lesbians actually did that. Jesus. 
Jesus Christ, my got whiplash. What a wild opening 10 minutes. Cut to this fella dreaming of the mother and son from the opening as they gesture over to Cammy. A woman, Andrea, asks what's wrong when the girl hands over a dead bird that bursts into flames. Andrea then stares with her down a dark tunnel when the evil dead entity rushes towards her and she wakes up in bed. She looks up at us as we cut to Julia and Cammy being woken up. Julia says they'll be here any time and we cut to Cammy opening the door to her cousin, Magdalena. Cut to the women greeting Andrea and getting in the car. Julia asks Andrea how she is and she says fine before asking if she got here earlier. Julia implies she stayed the night and they drive off with Andrea glancing back at Cammy. Ah, it seems a triangle is forming and I'm not just talking about the triangle of pubic hair located above Andrea's corned beef queef machine. I wrote that joke before I realised that Andrea and Cammy are actually sisters and that look was born out of concern rather than jealousy, but I liked it too much, so it stays. Cut to this party house as this fella pours whatever this is into whatever that is. He pours the solution into a hole when we cut back to the girls having a little sing song. <laughs> And then to them pulling up outside this bar. Inside they ask the bartender about a plot called Las Augustinas and everyone gets a bit weird with this big fella looking like he's going to cause some trouble. That is until this man gets up and they immediately back off. This mystery man gives the okay to the bartender who gives the girls directions and they head out. The man watches them leave and outside Magda makes friends with this little girl. The girl says her dad works in the bar and Magda tells her to be careful out here after giving her a couple of finger puppets. Cami asks since when did Magda have such a sweet side and she says she's all sweetness. The group are then approached by a couple of cops who say this place isn't for women. <laughs> The cop introduces himself as Pedro and the girls say they're late and will be heading off. Pedro says they're there for the girls, whatever they need, and they thank him. He asks where they're headed and upon hearing the name of their destination, Pedro's partner perks up. He asks if they're family and Andrea says she's Gustavo's niece. Pedro finally writes his number on Andrea's arm and they go their separate ways. The girls tease Andrea and Pedro asks his partner who Gustavo is, with him replying a man with a lot of money who hasn't been seen in years. Cut to the girls driving and arriving at their destination, then to this dungeon where this fella is eating. He gets up and in the background we hear a woman crying and screaming. The man then returns and adds some freshly cut flesh to his meal. Back with the girls, Andrea takes Magda's phone off her, encouraging everyone to be present in the moment. She calls Cammy over and tries to wipe her makeup off, but is told not to be inappropriate. Andrea then shows them this giant bird cage, which I'm sure has a proper name. She says a local family looks after the birds in the house, with Julia pointing out a dead bird said they aren't doing too well. <laughs> Cut back to the mystery man as he touches the scar in his face and we realise he is Juan, the son from the opening. We then flash back to him as a boy, his cut healed as he's shouted at by the man who made him f*** his own mum. The boy then walks over to a crib containing a crying baby and reaches inside. We don't see what happens but when he pulls his hand back out he's got blood on his fingers. Moving on! He drops the cup and we flash forward to present day as the man picks it up. On the stairs next to him, his son Mario watches as the cries of the baby echo in his mind, suggesting he is the baby all grown up. Cut to Mario screaming shut up at a woman who screams asking where her baby is. He then beats her to death. Not really much room for jokes in this one, is there? Hmm. Okay, I've got one. What's blue and sits at the bottom of a swimming pool? A dead baby. Cut to the girls as they drink wine and talk about Magda's master's degree. She doesn't seem too jazzed about it and says it's her boyfriend Nico who's really motivating her to do it. Julia asks how long they've been together and when Magda says a year, she questions whether or not she should be listening to someone she's been seeing for such a short time. Andrea comes to Nico's defense and Julia, who I'm starting to think is a real says she was only joking. They continue to talk about the boyfriend before moving on to Julia and Cammy moving in together. Andrea says Cammy needs to tell their mother out of respect, but she says she'll do it later. Magda then gets involved and Cammy tells her to stay out of it before heading inside. Julia goes to check on Cammy and Magda asks Andrea why she dislikes her. Cut 
cut to Juan approaching this woman and telling her his mother would have been proud of how he's treated her. He touches up her face for a bit, then buggers off as we cut back to the girls having a party. Julia tries to get Cammy to dance, but she's already pissed up, so instead dances with Magda. Andrea continues to mother Cammy, who complains when suddenly the lights go out. She says it's just the fuses, and Magda volunteers to go fix them with Julia going with her. They head out the back as inside Cammy asks Andrea why she treats Julia the way she does. She says she's good to her, so Andrea agrees to be more patient. She goes to get Cammy a glass of water as we cut to Julia and Magda, where things immediately get saucy. One thing you should know about me is I'm very, very good at detecting Well, apart from that one time it took like over 10 years, but I got there in the end. Cut to Mario feeding his mum and barking into cut with Julia dancing and kissing Cammy while Andrea looks on. Dog boy then sucks his dad off while Julia whaps her tits out and my looks like that John Travolta meme. The fun comes to an end when Julia sees Juan through the window and he starts banging on the door. The women start to worry as Andrea hopes they don't mean them any harm and Magda hides her phone. Magda asks what they want and the man slips a note under the door reading welcome. They discuss what to do with Magda saying they should call the police when Juan and his son open the door and walk in. Mario then takes their keys and the men sit down. Andrea thanks them for their help today but says they're having a private party when Juan pulls out his gun. Well f What follows is a horrific scene where the son f Magda. Bites a hole in her cheek and pours salt on it. <laughs> and the dad f***s Cammy. <laughs> it's f***ing horrific. <laughs> how many babies does it take to paint a house? It depends how hard you throw them. After it's over, Juan tells Andrea that tomorrow they'll be going on an excursion and the men sit back on the sofa. Cut to some time later as the women all sit up against this wall with their hands tied behind their backs. Andrea whispers first to Cammy, then to Magda who responds, asking her not to tell her mother. Juan tells them to shut up, then starts touching Cammy when Magda spits at him. In response, he drinks her spit and asks if she wants to kill him. He then tells her to kill him and places his gun on a table in front of her before throwing their phones in the fire. Cut to the rotting bird corpse and then to morning as Magda manages to get herself free. She picks up the gun and points it at the men, but when she pulls the trigger, nothing happens. She she then grabs the keys in her phone and in a daze walks over to the front door opening it. That's when she sees herself in the mirror and looks at her face wound and bruises. She lifts the gun once more and shoots her imaginary shots out into the world before putting the empty gun in her mouth. Whoa! Holy f***ing sh- her face exploded! Juan then returns to Andrea, asking if she wants to die with her calling him a pussy. The man then silently stands and leaves with his son. The women get themselves free of their bindings and Andrea goes to check on Magda, who isn't looking too hot. And I know what you're thinking, this is the point where John Joe wonders whether or not he'd still f did you see what just happened? That would be highly inappropriate. Cut to the police on their way to the scene as they pass Juan and Mario. At the scene, Pedro asks his partner who the men they passed were and he tells him their names and says it's weird because he's never attacked an out-of-towner. The partner implies getting involved will have dire consequences for them, but Pedro doesn't listen and tells the women he'll be taking them to the police station where they can call for people in the city to come get them. <laughs> Cut to the little girl outside the bar playing when suddenly Juan appears with a smile. Cut to the bartender stopping the cop car and telling them Juan has his daughter at the bar and asking for help. The cop hands the man a gun and they race to the bar finding the bartender's son who they also tall up. The men then step into the bar telling Juan to surrender but he doesn't seem bothered at all. He asks them if they're gonna leave the girl in that cave with no one to help and he offers himself up to be taken in when it all kicks off.
My name is Juan, but you may call me Juan Wick. We watch as Juan cuts the dad's throat, stabs the son, picks up the machete and chops the boy's arm off. Then just as Pedro is about to get the drop on him, he's shot by Mario. These two have a weird relationship. Cut to Juan leaving the bar, carrying the little girl, much to our hero's disappointment. He plops the dad's head on the hood of the cop car, then unlocks the door before walking off. The women get out, and Cammy starts to walk after the girl, but Andrea stops her, and they head inside to see if anyone's still alive. Andrea finds Pedro is still with us, and tends to his wounds as Julia checks on Cammy. Cammy says they have to go after the girl, which Julia isn't up for, and Andrea says Pedro's gonna be okay. Andrea also isn't a fan of Cammy's plan, and says they need to go get the city police. Cammy remains steadfast in her decision, while Julia calls it insane sane and Andrea for some mental reason relents. Look, I'm sorry mate, but that girl is dead. By the time you get there, Juan's gonna be using her as a condom to f his own son with. It's a sad situation for sure, but do yourself a favour and get the f out of there. While I think the choice to go back there is stupid, I must say, that's a haunting bit of writing. Good stuff. Pedro pipes up and hilariously agrees with Cami, saying he knows where they live and has guns. The women hug as Pedro says he's gonna call the city police from the station, so they send back up and they head out. Cut to Juan's humble abode as he hands the captive woman food and calls her his sister. Juan, when your mum said to take care of your sister, I don't think this is what she meant. Did she really have to add on to that request not to imprison and f he says he left someone for her in the cellar and says she'll get to be a mum again before unlocking her chains. Cut to Juan having a little drink and Mario remembering his father slapping him for being wasted. This then transitions to young Juan being forced to fight these fellas with guns. Both sides lose men with Juan's father catching a bullet to the back and dropping to his knees before being executed. The rebel tells Juan not to be afraid and asks where the other comrades are but when he turns his back gets his throat opened. <laughs> We see another woman being tortured with Juan's dad disemboweling her into cut with him taking out the other rebels. Juan then executes her as he shoots the final rebel in the face. <laughs> back to present day as our heroes break into Juan's compound. And let me just reiterate my feelings about this plan. It's f***ing stupid and cannot possibly end well. They hear a noise and immediately panic with Andrea and Julia running in one direction and Pedro and Cami hiding around a corner. Andrea spots Mario as Pedro and Cami find a room covered in newspapers reporting the guerrilla invasion of Chile and a chained up woman who asks them to kill her. Andrea then comes up with a plan to distract Mario. To be fair, Julia, that plan would work on me, and I'm not even an inbred basement baby, as far as I know. Now, pop your top off and let's take one last look at those jumbo yum-yums. Julia then steps out in front of Mario, who draws his knife. She says she wants to feel a man like him and gets her bats out, which Mario immediately starts sucking on. Andrea then jumps him and knocks him out, but when Julia is about to stab him, she stops her. No, no, no. What the f*** do you mean, Andrea? You just said you'd kill him. And yeah, you're in a room with another woman that he's already turned inside out. This is a high-risk situation, Andrea. Kill the Anyway, they tie him up and find the others where Andrea says she's going to trade him for the little girl, then kill him. Dumb plan, but whatever. Julia hugs Cammy and gives her a pep talk about not letting these bastards take away her life when they hear someone scream for help. <laughs> Human grenade. Nice. The heroes run for their lives, shutting the door behind them when they hear it lock and realise they're trapped. Juan then throws a smoke grenade down, unlocks the door and tells them to get his son out of there. Pedro says the son stays and in response, Juan starts pumping green gas into the room. He then comes down the stairs, popping both Pedro and Cami. The women pick Cami up and f***ing abandon Pedro who catches a gun butt to the face before being locked inside. Oh yeah, don't try and save Pedro or nothing, the only person who was helping you out and actually went along with this f***ing stupid plan. I'm sure the green gas is fine. Never mind! Cut to Juan waking up his son and enter the women as he jumps out and attacks them. Mario claps Andrea, then picks up Julia and throws her out the f window. <laughs> Mario moves on to Cami and is about to kill her when Andrea stabs him in the foot and starts raining down brick hits, absolutely destroying his balls.
Bad luck, Mario. It's going to be a lot harder to when your penis has been turned into a fine paste. Our survivors then duck out as Juan finds his boy all kinds of f***ed up. He puts him out of his misery and we cut to him singing to another prisoner. Andrea and Cammy follow the sound and demand Juan turn around when we see the woman he's restrained as Julia. I gotta say, the timeline of this sequence is a little bit iffy. Him waking up Mario and the boy immediately appearing to attack the women and now Juan having the time to grab Julia and put her into this jigsaw-like position feels like it should have taken a little bit more time to me. But whatever, it's almost over. Who gives a f***? Andrea demands that he let her go, but Juan is clearly having none of it. Andrea says she's gonna kill him, and Juan challenges her to do so when Cammy tells her to shut the f*** up. Which, of course, she can't do, leading to this. <laughs> In hell, no more munching box for you, my love. Cammy jumps on Juan's back, and the two begin to tussle when Andrea shoots him three times. He turns to look at her, and Andrea shoots him in the head, finally ending the man's life. She runs to Cammy, whose wound is now bleeding profusely, and tells her to put pressure on it and that all three of them are getting out of there. I don't know about three. The fact that any of you are still alive is a surprise to me. She leaves Cammy and enters another room to find a baby lying in its crib. She stares at it for a moment before realizing Juan's sister is in the room with her. The sister asks Andrea not to hurt her and she lowers her gun. The sister then thanks Andrea when she hears Cammy scream and goes off running after the noise. And she finds her sister, her heart, now on the outside of her chest. <laughs> what the f***? I thought she shot this in the head. The final two start fighting with Andrea catching a couple of stabs, then shooting these jugs of acid, burning them both and finally killing Juan for good. Andrea then begs her sister for forgiveness. <laughs> Andrea's face burn from the acid is pretty sick too. Not as bad as Juan's, whose face is literally fizzing. If there is anything you don't want your face to do, it's fizz. Cut to Juan's sister looking at her mother's ID, then taking her necklace off and laying it down before comforting the little girl. They leave and we cut to Andrea approaching the baby once more as behind her someone cuts through the door's lock. She points her gun at the baby when the police burst in telling her to put it down or they'll shoot. She then whispers to the baby you're gonna be just like them when a gun goes off. This one cop smiles, suggesting the baby is okay, and the others look at each other as elsewhere we see the sister step into the sunlight for the first time in god knows how many years. The sister and the little girl then walk out into the world, and the film cuts to credits. The end! Well, that movie was depressing as f I loved it. Trauma is one of those movies that made me feel really sad breaking down for the review. The contradictory visuals of flawless beauty and extreme grotesque make for an experience that refuses to let you feel comfortable throughout, meaning even during the scenes without intense gore, you never feel safe. If that doesn't scream a good time to you, you might be in the wrong place. The story is simple enough with a group of women on vacation being assaulted by a couple of locals and taking their revenge, a story we've heard many times before. What's different here is how in-depth the film goes into the antagonist's backstory. It never tries to justify the villain's actions, but does give you an idea as to how they got f***ed up beyond all recognition. I do love a story that attempts to balance both protagonist and antagonist, and trauma does that to an uncomfortable degree. Onto the characters, and we get a nice variety here, with the core cast of women all being likeable and believable. Well, except for Julia. What a she was. Both Cammy and Magda's post performances are also disturbingly good, with the only underwhelming performance coming from Andrea. I wish she could have got just a bit more unhinged by the end of the film, forced to snap after melting Juan's face, but instead she seems just a bit upset. I wanted her to be out of her mind when she's about to shoot the baby, but no. Then there's our villains Juan and Mario, and they are suitably terrifying. Aside from the killer vibe, there's that extra layer of their super up relationship that's so gross and both men play the part perfectly. Onto the gore and while it's not wall to wall action with the first drop of blood not spilling until nearly an hour into the movie when it hits it hits hard with an exploding face slashed throat chopped off arm destroyed penis ripped off jaw and savage acid burns. There's also the brutalest scene which isn't gore necessarily but certainly the worst thing in the film. 
The movie really takes its time getting to the good stuff, but the build-up is so uncomfortable that the gore ends up being much more of a relief than anything else. In terms of presentation, Trauma is a really beautiful film. The editing is fine, and I really enjoyed the score, but the way it's shot is the standout for me. As I said, the film manages to flip between gorgeous shots of the countryside and horrific images of misery with ease, getting the most out of them while accentuating their contrast. This might be the most cinematic extreme horror I've ever covered, with the only other movie coming close being Antichrist. It's really f***ing good. All in all, Trauma is a difficult but brilliant film. Yes, the characters may not be the most intelligent, and maybe our final girl is a bit of a dud, but everything surrounding them is fantastic. That first hour is difficult to get through, but if you stick with it, you're rewarded with some pretty grisly fun by the end. It's definitely one I'd recommend, but if it upsets you, don't come crying to me. So that was my review for Trauma. What do you lot think? For how sad putting together this video made me, you gotta admit, this is on the higher end of the quality scale of extreme horror. Like, it actually looks like a movie. It's not often that an extreme horror movie could actually play in a theatre, though seeing this with an audience might be a little bit awkward, on account of all the At least in this one, the killer's got it good, with one having his penis destroyed and the other getting his face melted off. Speaking of which, if you want to see Magda's face explode completely uncut and early, head over to patreon.com forward slash John Joe Lyons. There you can find the uncut version of this review, plus others with more stuff being added all the time. We got the uncut reviews, Patreon exclusive reviews, slash comic breakdowns, and the Discord. And all that can be yours for as little as $2 a month. You can pledge more, I really appreciate it, and please do, I need to pay for therapy. I'm not even joking this time, I just signed up for better help and it's like 45 quid a week, so help a man out. So that's it for another week. Like the video, leave a comment, and click subscribe if you haven't already. My name's John Joe Lyons, and what's the difference between a dead baby and a pint of I don't have a dead baby leaking out of my asshole right now. Good night, everyone.